So this is the uh, idea that we were talking about. We want to uh, be creating this one over here. These classes. So if we have to define those classes, we should always start with the base class. So in this case, the employee, because the hourly employee is inheriting from the employee. So we always start from the base class. Okay, so let's... And for it being just to make it easy, always start with some something called test something. Uh, just for a standardized way to create your project. And this test employee is going to be used only because it has the main. And this is where our, we are going to be putting our code for testing our other classes. So we separate the, generally separate the main from the other classes just for the purpose of organization. So then I we created the test empl the employee and then uh, just give it uh, empty and then the hourly employee which extends the employee. So now I'm going to be putting the uh, information the that is uh, the name and hire date for the employee. So to make it simple. Let's uh, go for uh, this. The uh, name is m a string, so I'm going to put string name. And the hire date, well, there's we can use date as there's a class called date, but I don't want to get into that. Let's just use a simple date that is going to be a string, so I can put uh, whatever I want. So I'm going to be using something like hire date, like this. Now uh, I need to create those getters and setters. So get name, set name, get hire date, set hire date. But I'm not going to be doing it this manually. Uh, probably you did it manually because NetBeans can help you create those uh, accessors and mutators. And it can also, as you notice, these are not private, but it can also make them private. So the, we're going. This is called the encapsulation. It means protect the data uh, by making it not invisible from outside of the class and then add these uh, getters and setters to allow the control of the access or the change of, the, of those uh, those uh, instance variables so to do that I'm going just to click on refactor and encapsulate fields I think there's another way how to do it uh, so right click maybe but let's do this this way refactor encapsulate fields I just click on that and then you're going this to have this window in this window, you notice that the field's visibility is going to be changed to private. That means those ones, those two are going to become private. And then I need not to select, do, do I want get name and then only get name and the set hire date, for example. I just would like them all. I don't select them all because this is what I want. I want all of them. But in some cases, I might not want all of them. So I'm selecting the ones that I want. And that's it. I can click on preview, but I don't know what I'm doing, so I'll just right, go ahead and click on on uh, refactor. And then now you can see I have all the get name, set name, get hire date, set hire date, with all things set up for me. You remember the idea about the this, right? Why do we need to put this here? Because if we don't, there's going to be a confusion. Is this name the name from the uh, parameter or the name that is the one from the class but as you can see NetBeans helps you to understand which one is which this is the name from the class and it doesn't highlight here because this is not the name from the class this all what you're doing is just saying the parameter name what's inside of it take what's inside of it and put it in the same place so it's just giving the, uh, the, the program some useless instructions Take this and put it in the same place. So, uh, but we don't want to do that because we have the same name in the parameter and the name of the uh, instance variable. So we need to distinguish between them which one is which by using this. And this means this class. This dot is going to show me all what is part of this class. As you can see, all these are from this class. And you have also the rest. Remember, the rest are coming from the class object. Yes, exactly. So that's it, and this is done for this uh, employee. I can uh, maybe do some checking if the name is empty or things like that, but I don't want to, to go into that, that detail for now. I'm just accepting whatever the user gives me. 
So this is done for the um, uh, employee. I'm going to be doing the same thing for the hourly employee. And uh, for the hourly employee, what do we have? Wage rate and hours. Probably both of them double. Why hours double? Maybe someone has worked like 2.5 hours or something like that. So I'm going to do the same thing. I think if I right click, I can have access to that as well. Let me just, yeah, refactor encapsulate field so I can either get it from this menu over here or just right click refactor and then encapsulate field there's probably maybe a quicker way by using some uh, keys but don't know them so I'm going to select them all and refactor and I have them all so it's quite straightforward very easy to to do and it doesn't take much time and you notice here in the navigator it shows me all what I have so now let's get and create uh, I mean the constructor and uh, define the constructor we define is a better is a more appropriate word so we define the constructor we make it public employee it has the same name we don't, it doesn't have any return data type and then I'd like to I can have a constructor with only no maybe uh, arguments just put some default values or I am going to be putting my constructor that takes two values which is the uh, the name and the hire date so if you'd like to to call to uh, instantiate this employee you have to give me the name and the hire date and it's going to be set put directly into this dot name is equal to name same thing that we had there Hire date is equal to hire date. Now notice once I did this, I have like this small uh, icon of the uh, there's an error in the hourly employee. Well, why there's an error? It wasn't before. It, uh, there's an error because of this constructor. If I remove the constructor, I saved no more errors. If I add it now, there's an error. Why is there something like that? Actually, if I go and check what is the error that I have, it says constructor employee in class employee cannot be applied to given types. What does this mean? I'm in the class hourly employee, and the error message is not about the class hourly employee. The error message is about the class employee. So that's the problem that I'm having now with this with this inheritance with this uh, base class employee I'm saying now uh, there that this base class needs this constructor to be started which now uh, you remember with Java if you don't define your constructor like in this case Java is going to define one for you right the one with no arguments so you can do something like this so you can have this uh, employee e equal new employee for example so this new employee over here is the call to the constructor but I don't have a constructor so Java is going to give me one by default so it will work for me but if I define my own constructor like what I'm doing here now by defining my own constructor I cannot use this one given to me by Java. Java is not going to be adding any constructor for me because I'm defining my own constructor so it will tell you okay you know what you're doing do what you, whatever you would, you would like to do but I'm not going to be giving you any extra uh, constructors because maybe you don't want to have a constructor that doesn't have no arguments so if you want some if you want one that doesn't have any arguments you have to define it yourself because now you have another one with arguments like here this one here so once you define any constructor, Java is not going to be giving you any one. So because of this now, there is this problem that is happening. I can no longer use a constructor with no arguments. I just need absolutely need to give something in uh, two ways. I mean, this is, for example, it's going to be happier because it's, it just requires a string, two strings as arguments. But now let's understand the problem with the other this one this hourly employee why then it is complaining with that hourly employee well for the same reason 
because now this hourly employee how many uh, variables it does have access to and I'm not saying it does have it, it has how many okay let's say uh, split the question into parts the first part how many uh, instance variables this class hourly employee has two for now this this the one that we defined are two but actually we have four because of the two others coming from the employee well now we said that this class employee has a specific constructor and it cannot be giving you like the default values yourself it's, it needs to call this constructor so now what this is complaining about it is complaining about that Java knows that you're going to be or I mean uh, initializing this by using the default constructor right but what about the others that are coming from the class employee you need to call the other constructor for the superclass and you did that this is what it is complaining about so how to fix this it's very easy when you just need to create the uh, constructor for the hourly employee and uh, in this case we need also the wage rates and hours well we need maybe more than just that actually in this case we would like to have also not only this we would like to have uh, what about the the name and the hire date and let me just do something like this quickly and then I'm going to be uh, giving you more details about what I meant with this, those others so even now while doing this it still complains about the employee why because actually I have this wage and hours which is coming from here but what did we do with these uh, not this I mean uh, yes this dot and I can have something about the name but I don't see the name there because I said this but if I control space I can see that there's something coming no I don't see okay. So what happens now to the name and uh, the hire date, I don't have access to them. But I should, for example, if I'm using this instead of uh, employee, I'm using uh, hours. Is it hours employee? Uh, hourly. Hourly employee. Let's copy and paste. Now this hourly employee, if I'd like to instantiate an hourly employee, I need to give a lot of information actually. I, I should give, what's, for example, the name and then the date and then the wage rate like 50, for example, and then uh, how many hours, let's say, for example. I just would like to be able to do something like that because this hourly employee has access to four uh, instance variables, I mean, it's four variables. So. This is why I need in this constructor of the hourly employee to also update the ones from the other one. So I can do this in different ways. I can specify, for example, something like this. String name and then string higher date. So now I'm forcing the, the, the ones that are going to be using my class hourly employee directly to use uh, these four arguments. Uh, constructor that takes the name, hire date, which are coming from employee, and I'm going to be putting there in employee, and then the uh, hours, uh, wage, wage rate, and then the hours. But what what should I do with this? I should call the constructor of the superclass of my employee class with these info with this information. How to do that? Well, this is very interesting. There's as we, there's this for this class. There's something that is for the base class. Is something called super for the super class. Super, if I put super dot, and I can see all that is in the super class. Okay, you can see this is get hired date. This is specifically in that super class. But I can also this the advantage of that is call the constructor by using this this and between parentheses use the uh, data that I would like to send to the constructor so now this super name hire date is going to be calling this class constructor employee the, uh, with two arguments and then it's going to be doing something like this 
So this is one way to fix the problem. You can see that we don't have that now any problem anymore because now this now when I'm calling this let's understand exactly what's happening when I'm calling this uh, this one over here this constructor is going to be calling the constructor of the superclass with some values and then put the, some values into the instance variables of that class so two things are going to be happening when I'm calling the constructor of hourly I'm calling the hourly constructor is calling the employee constructor and then the employee constructor does what it needs to do with uh, whatever the instance variables it has and then my the hourly constructor is doing going to do whatever it needs to do with the other ones that it has so everyone is doing the inst the initialization job uh, on the variables that he has and this is a way how to uh, use these constructors now I have these two classes and I can use this and then I can for example display uh, e.getName I don't know why it didn't appear but now it, uh, it shows I see this e.getName get name is coming from the class employee if you remember e now is hourly let's, let's just rename this to make it hourly employee he so this is an hourly employee I don't have normally the get name but because it's inherited I'm going to be able to access it so I can do something like this to get the name get uh, the higher date and then get the wage rate and then get the hours let's put something for example I can run this and now you can see that this, these are methods that are coming from the class uh, employee and these are coming from the class hourly employee so that's, that's the thing so you can see that these are get hours and I, can, I don't know why it, the others did not appear all of them well, they are here they don't appear in bold because they're not part of the class itself they're part of the inherited so in the inherited I can see the ones coming from the employee and I can see also the ones coming from object because we said everybody's inheriting from object so, so that's why the, the classes in the bottom of your hierarchy is going to be having access to a lot of different methods and instance variables. 